and there are probably about 8,000 snake bites a year, and maybe 10% of those are fatal. So in this video, we're going to talk really about two kinds of snake. Here I got a picture of the coral snake and a rattlesnake. So those are the sna poisonous snakes we're going to have in the U.S. Uh, so it's, this mostly pertains to that. So if there's anyone watching internationally, you may have different snakes to worry about, like cobras and various sea snakes. So there are 14 different kinds of families of snakes, only five of which are poisonous. And that really depends on how you want to classify them. Because I would probably say there's actually only three which are poisonous. And so the three different kinds are the Colubridae, Vipiridae, and the Elapidae. So one of the key features of the Colubridae, and this includes things like whip snakes, is you can see these uh, fangs here. They're in the back of the mouth, and they point backward. Now, the vipers, they have their fangs in the front of their mouth, and you can see they're folded up at the top of their mouth until they want to bite, and then they can flip down. So they got these long, hinged fangs that they can tuck in their mouth, and when they want to bite, they got these fangs that can penetrate deep, so they can really uh, bite deeply. And this would be like your adders, and actually rattlesnakes and cottonmouths are a subfamily. This We'll get to that in a sec. Now, for the elapidae, they have fangs in the back of their mouth as well, but these point forward. So these guys can't bite as deeply as these guys. Now, a subfamily of the vipers are the crotalids, also known as the pit vipers. And so they also have the fangs of the vipers that are in the front that are unhinged. But the other thing you'll notice is that they have these pits right here in between their eyes and their noses, and these are heat-seeking not heat-seeking, heat-sensing area, so they can sense heat. And so the one we're going to talk about are the rattlesnakes in this group. Now the other group that has a subgroup are the uh, elapids. And so the hydrophidae, they're the sea snakes, like hydro, right? And most of these can't go on land anyway. And another feature that they have is they have this little uh, flap, this little paddle tail. And the other snake we're going to talk about are the elapids, uh, like the uh, coral snake. So there you go, that's our organization of the snakes. You got your colubridae, your vipers, your elapids, and the vipers also, you got your pit vipers, and the elapids, you got your uh, sea snakes in there. And so these are the two poison guys we're going to look at. So let's start with the rattlesnakes, and then we'll move on to the elapidae. Now, it's certainly possible that someone can be bit by another snake, but it's not that likely. The people who are going to be bit by other snakes, like a cobra, are people who have them as pets, and they just don't really know what they're doing. Uh, speaking of those people, let's look at the risk factors for snake bites. And those are broken down into the five T's, which stand for testosterone, meaning that it's men that usually get bit, toothless, uh, t-shirt, tattoo, and trailer park. Yeah, those are mostly a joke, but uh, I would like to add two more. Uh, I'm going to somehow make them start with T. Uh, one would be that they like to take a drink since most of these will in involve alcohol, and the last T is Texas, or Arkansas, or uh, North Carolina, or Georgia, because most of these do happen in the South, maybe because that's where the snakes are. I'm not making a judgment on Southerners. But there's a, one more thing we should talk about. Snake bites in the leg tend to be accidental, and those are even sometimes called legitimate snake bites. Maybe you stepped on a snake as you're walking through a field. Snake bites on the arm, those tend to be uh, provoked. Maybe you tried to grab a snake, uh, either in, out in the, in the field or uh, in a tank that you have at home, and those are called illegitimate snake bites. It only makes sense, because how's a snake going to reach all the way up here?